The next item of business, point of order, Andy Whiteman. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, this morning, uh, asking a supplementary question to question six at First Minister's Questions, I should have drawn attention to members to my uh, register of interests. As the operator of a, a Who Owns Scotland website, I apologise for not having done so, and I draw members' attention to it now. Thank you very much, Mr Whiteman. That is now duly noted. And the next item of business is consideration of business motion 10993 in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau, setting out a timetable for the offensive behaviour at football and threatening communications repeal Scotland Bill. May I ask any member who wishes to speak against the motion to press the request to speak button? No one has pressed, and I call on Joe Fitzpatrick to move motion 10993. Formally moved. The question is that motion 10993 be agreed. Are we all agreed? The motion is therefore agreed. And the next item of business is a statement by Keith Brown on an update on the South of Scotland partnership. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of his statement and so there should be no interventions or interruptions. And I call on Keith Brown. Ten minutes, please, Cabinet Secretary. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Uh, I welcome the opportunity to update members on the progress that we're making to deliver a new enterprise agency for the South of Scotland. Uh, members will recall that one of the key recommendations from last year's Enterprise and Skills Review was a commitment to a new agency supporting inclusive economic growth in the South. The review recognised the unique circumstances of the South of Scotland, its strengths, its opportunities and its challenges. It also acknowledged the benefits that a new agency could deliver, developing a deeper understanding of the South of Scotland and tailoring a response informed by that understanding. And we do know, of course, that the South of Scotland has great potential. It's woven, it, woven into the fabric of our economy. It plays a key part in our economic history, for example, nurturing our textile industries. It's a beautiful region of Scotland, attracting visitors from far and wide. Tourism is an extremely important part of the economy of the south of Scotland. Its agriculture and forestry sectors are thriving. It's as rich as anywhere in renewable energy resources. And its businesses, many small and family-owned businesses, show a real entrepreneurial spirit. So we want to ensure that the south of Scotland plays a key role in our economic future too. And we know that the south faces some economic challenges. It has, for example, more people working in lower paid jobs in other parts of Scotland. It sees fewer businesses start up in the area than elsewhere, and their success rate when they do start up is lower. Its business, uh, businesses spend significantly less on research and development, and a higher number of its young people are leaving and not finding opportunities that attract them back to the area. So we have a tremendous opportunity to work with businesses and communities to help transform the economy generating a response that in turn responds to the needs of generations. Uh, and that's to ensure that people in the south of Scotland are able to fully participate in the economy, access the opportunities which are there, and also that we can help to develop the skills necessary and tackle the barriers that might be getting in the way. It's an opportunity to be bold and ambitious and to do things differently to benefit the area. In our programme for government, we made a commitment to introduce legislation later this year to establish the new body. We also committed to putting in place interim arrangements in advance of the statutory body. And today we take an important step in that legislative process. I'm delighted to launch the public consultation on the South of Scotland Enterprise Agency. It will open today and it will run for 12 weeks until the 7th of June. In the consultation, we've set out what we see as the three initial high-level aims for the agency. First, of course, we want it to drive the economy forward with growth and in a way that creates opportunities for all. We also want to help businesses become more productive, focused on fair work opportunities, tackling issues that prevent people fully participating in the economy. Secondly, we want to sustain and grow our communities, building communities that can play a greater role in the economic, social and environmental success of their area. And thirdly, we want to capitalise on people and resources, developing skills and making the most of all the assets of the area. So the consultation I've launched today seeks views on the detailed specific activities people want to see the agency carry out. And the responses that we receive will help inform the legislation for the new body and help shape its structure, a milestone moment in the economic future of the South. 
and we'll complement the written consultation with a series of events across the south of Scotland to hear views directly from those with a stake in the agency's future. And of course, in this year of young people, we shall make sure that we hear their voices too. But I don't need to tell members that legislation takes time. We hope that this parliament, uh, if it's supportive, means that we can have the new body up and running by the 1st of April 2020. We can't and we don't want to make the south of Scotland wait any longer than that. It's vital that the area sees the benefit of a fresh approach as quickly as possible. And to that end, we have established the South of Scotland Economic Partnership to take things forward in the meantime. The partnership is chaired by Professor Russell Griggs, OEB, OBE. Uh, the partnership brings together public sector organisations that support economic growth in the South of Scotland with members from the private, third and further and higher education sectors. And like us, the partnership is ambitious for the South of Scotland seizing the opportunity to do things differently. And it will ensure a fresh approach to securing inclusive economic growth with the private and third sectors central to its work and helping to shape and design services. And the interim period that we have provides the opportunity as well to align existing activities, making sure that current services are as effective as they can be in addressing people's needs. It also allows us the opportunity to trial new approaches to economic development and it will help prepare the way for the new agency, assessing what's worked and before, and also ensuring that the agency is responsive to and informed by the needs of the people of the south of Scotland. And when I met uh, Russell Griggs last week, he set out the progress that the partnership has already made since its first meeting in February. He also emphasized to me the commitment, energy, and enthusiasm members have already brought to the task, uh, their determination to improve the economic outcomes for the south. So the partnership is now working on a clear and prioritised work plan setting out what it will be doing. And it's clear that its work needs to be shaped by the needs and perspectives of people in the south of Scotland. To that end, it's established six specific theme groups to explore issues that are key in their view to the success of the south. And this will enable the partnership to draw in views from across the south, capturing perspective and expertise. The groups are farming, forestry and land management, key sectors, education and skills, infrastructure, communities and business support. And they will identify key issues and explore how they could be addressed. We are committed to the success of the partnership and in our 2018-19 budget, we've allocated 10 million pounds in additional resources to support its work. And that's over and above the resources partners already invest across the area. Our additional resources will support new activity that wouldn't otherwise have happened. The partnership will make recommendations on potential projects. It will assess them against clear and consistent criteria, ensuring that they deliver real impact and economic benefit. And of course, those resources which I've mentioned build on our other investment in the south of Scotland. Investment in innovation through my colleague Paul Wheelhouse, through skills, through Jamie Hepburn, businesses and infrastructure. And some examples of that investment include, of course, the £275.5 million investment in the new Dumfries and Galloway Royal Infirmary, which opened in December. £68 million from our Schools for the Future programme in eight schools across the area. £60 million through the Scottish Funding Council in further and higher education over the last three financial years. And £353 million in the increasingly successful Borders Railway, which was, just to remind the Parliament, the longest piece of new rail infrastructure in the UK for 100 years. So, President Officer, I very much look forward to working with members over the months ahead as the partnership takes forward its work and we shape the new agency. I believe that this is a very exciting time for the south of Scotland and I would encourage all members here and, of course, members of the public to be active participa participants in the consultation process which we are lodging today. Thank you. Uh, the Cabinet Secretary will now take questions on the issues raised in his statement and I intend to allow around 20 minutes for that. It would be helpful if members who wish to ask a question or to press the request to speak buttons now. And I call Dean Lockhart. Thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for advance copy of his statement. We welcome our progress made in the establishment of a new enterprise agency for the south of Scotland. It was, after all, originally a policy of the Scottish Conservatives. And we will support all steps to encourage sustainable growth across the south. This will require an approach that is tailored to the unique characteristics and needs of the economy and the workforce of the south, as well as tapping the real potential that exists in the region. There is much work to be done on this front because the economy of the south has suffered in the past 10 years. 
GDP and productivity levels in the South are 20% below average levels in Scotland. With this background, I have the following questions for the Cabinet Secretary. Recent figures show that productivity levels in the South and GDP uh, have been in decline. What steps will the Cabinet Secretary take to reverse these worrying trends in the South of Scotland? In his statement, the Cabinet Secretary mentioned that the budget allocated £10 million to the South of Scotland Economic Partnership. As he knows, it will take more than £10 million to address the economic challenges in the South. So can I ask the Cabinet Secretary, can he confirm what additional budget will be available for the Enterprise Agency once it is established? Keith Brown. Uh, can I uh, respond to the first point I think made by Dean Lockhart? I wasn't aware um, when it became Conservative Party policy, maybe it was a bit of a secret, but uh, I do know that um, however long ago it was, the various things which I described as having been done, for example, the Borders Railway, were also uh, at say, various points different parties' policy. The difference is we've delivered it. You've had decades to deliver this and you didn't do it. We are the ones that are delivering it. And I do think we have had a relatively consensual approach to this up until now, and it's unfortunate that uh, Dean Lockhart's chosen to deviate from that. I've laid out before the response that we are making across Scotland in terms of productivity and in terms of GDP, and underlined on many occasions. The thing which I think members across the chamber, apart from uh, Dean Lockhart's benches, acknowledge that Brexit presents a very real threat to the economy and is having an effect now uh, on the economy. Uh, and of course, one of the responses to the uh, situation that he describes is, of course, the establishment of this agency itself, which I'd hope we'd have support from the Conservatives uh, for. In relation to the £10 million uh, the initial investment um, and how that will then develop in future years, well, of course, that's for future budgets. Uh, but there was no proposal, as far as I'm aware, from the Conservatives to have a higher uh, allocation from that in any alternative version of a budget produced by them. They will be free, of course, in future years to do some work on that and put forward an additional proposal and see where the money should come from. But I think it's along with uh, the discussion which we're having in terms of a potential Borderlands initiative, along with establishing this agency, this is £10 million which will be very well received in the south of Scotland and used for good purposes. Colin Smith. Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of his statement. Having campaigned for, for many years as a councillor and chairperson of the South of Scotland Alliance for a, a rethink on the support provided to the area to tackle our huge economic challenges, I very much welcome the proposal to establish a South of Scotland Enterprise Agency. I look forward to, to shaping the final proposals when legislation comes before Parliament. But given that, that the recommendations to establish the, the new body were made uh, in October 2016, I'm sure the Cabinet Secretary does understand there are frustrations that the start date of, of <coughs> April 2020 for the new agency is still more than two years away, but the economic challenges are there just now. That timetable means that the work of the, the interim partnership is therefore going to be uh, vital. I know that in his statement, the Cabinet Secretary said the partnership will make recommendations on how to spend the £10 million budget, but can he confirm who will make the final decision on how that money is spent, and will he give a guarantee that the decision will be made in the south of Scotland? Now, ensuring the decisions are made in the south of Scotland by those living in the south of Scotland is a vital principle for the new body. So can I give a commitment that the membership of the new agency will be genuinely determined by local stakeholders in the south of Scotland? And finally, Officer, skills, yeah, will be a, a finally, crucial part, skills will be a crucial part of the new agency. So can the Cabinet Secretary say a bit more about whether existing powers that sit and resources that sit within Skills Development Scotland will be devolved to the new agency when that agency is established? Keith Brown. There's quite a lot in there, but to go to the first point that Colin Smith made, of course, we'd like to do this as quickly as possible. I don't see any way that we can truncate that 18-month period before we can establish it, and I'm open to any suggestions uh, about that. That's just the nature of uh, parliamentary legislation. Um, and I think I agree with uh, the point made by Colin Smith that we can't wait for that, and that's why we've established a partnership. That's why we've allocated funds, very substantial funds, to it. And that's also why we're drawing together the existing actors in the south of Scotland to try and make an impact uh, as soon as possible. Uh, in relation to his point on uh, skills, um, I have said, not least in relation to the Ayrshire uh, 
partnership, the three Ayrshire councils. If there's a proposal that comes from any part of Scotland to try and see how they can work with skills development more, more closely and also more closely reflect the local demands, the local needs in terms of skills, I'm more than willing to listen to that. I've said that since the enterprise uh, and skills review was undertaken and I, I've said that. There are some early signs that the partnership is grappling with that. Uh, there's some very good collaboration between the two councils involved. And it's really down to the partners, that, that the people we've established on that partnership to come to the government at the suggestion of other people like Colin Smith or people from the south of Scotland otherwise uh, to come forward with their suggestions. And I would say I would approach that uh, with, uh, with an open mind. And in terms of how the uh, money is spent, of course, there'll be a discussion between the government uh, and the partnership. That's as it should be. It's the same as it happens in the city deals. We have a, a, a custodial uh, duty in terms of public funds but these uh, submissions have been made to the partnership just now they're the ones that are considering the, the, the <coughs> various proposals which are being made for that but of course there'll be a discussion with the government on it as well right, I have quite a lot of questions that people want to ask so if we can have quick questions and answers please we should be able to get everyone in and I have Emma Harper followed by Rachel Hamilton thank you presiding officer um, to ask the uh, Cabinet Secretary, if the new board for the South of Scotland Economic Partnership intends to give consideration to infrastructure investment such as roads and rail networks as part of the new agency support and inclusive economic growth. Keith Brown. Uh, yes, it will be able to take um, uh, decisions in terms of uh, infrastructure investment, but that, those decisions um, will be formed by the representations that they received and also the view of the partnership as to what the priorities should be. Um, so there's no question of us excluding issues such as infrastructure investment from the remit. Rachel Hamilton, followed by Joan McAlpin. Uh, tourism is a key sector in the south of Scotland region. In the Scottish borders alone, it contributes 194 million annually. Does the Cabinet Secretary understand that by not robustly identifying it in his statement as a key group risks this sector being overlooked or not capitalising its worth through the South of Scotland Economic Partnership? By including tourism and growing the sector, it can improve low productivity, increase below average wages and business sizes. And would the Cabinet Secretary consider my request on behalf of the tourism sector to include it within uh, the, the key sectors? Keith Brown. Hey. I actually mentioned at uh, the very start of my statement, uh, it is a crucial, I, I recognise of course, and that's why I mentioned it, um, uh, talking about attracting visitors from far and wide and how central tourism was to the south of Scotland, perhaps the member missed that, but I do agree with her, there's, pardon, oh, I, I, sorry, I can't take a question from a sedentary <laughs> position, but, um, so I've mentioned that, I do recognise it, uh, and I'm, uh, the, the six key sectors which I mentioned are the ones that the partnership have come up with. And what I would say, as I've said earlier on the statement, is if you want to make representations to influence that, then please do so directly to the partnership as well as to me, and we can have that conversation. We're not putting a block on this. We're very seized of how important tourism is, and on that I think we can agree. John McAlpin, followed by Jackie Bailey. Thank you very much. Can I too welcome the establishment of the partnership as a member of the Economy Committee of the last Parliament. I often called for tailored support uh, for the South of Scotland. Can the Cabinet Secretary indicate whether the new partnership will consider the support it can give to the creative industries, a key sector in the South? And given that many of these industries are currently supported by Business Gateway, what the role of Business Gateway will be when the agency is up and running? Keith Brown. Uh, can I thank uh, Joan McAlpine for her question and also say that both in relation to creative industries which she's raised and Rachel Hamilton's point on tourism, I did mention key sectors were an important part or one of the six strands of the activity that have been taken forward. It's one of the reasons why uh, Fiona Hislop's here, she has a responsibility both for the creative industries uh, and for tourism and that reflects the importance that we place on these things. So the board actually, and I know Joan McAlpine's aware of this, does draw on the experience of those in the creative industries. One of the theme groups I mentioned will focus on as I've said, the key sectors, and there's no question that creative industries is one of those. Decisions about the scope of activities of the new agency are still to be finalised, and we will consider any suggestions in terms of the future role of Business Gateway as part of the next stage. But that initiative will have to come from the local authorities who are responsible for Business Gateway at this time. Jackie Bailey, followed by Andy Whiteman. And I welcome the South of Scotland Enterprise Agency and the £10 million of funding. And I wonder whether I could explore a principle with the Cabinet Secretary. Does he envisage the funding increasing in due course to at least match the funding received by Highlands and Islands Enterprise, which, of course, given population levels in, in the borders and Dumfries and Galloway, they're actually higher than those in, higher, in Highlands and Islands? Keith Brown. 
reasons why it's not difficult to give a definitive answer at this stage. One is because, unlike in the Highlands and Islands, Scottish enterprise are still actively involved in spending money in the south of Scotland at this time, and that's going to take some time to work uh, through the system. But of course, we want, to, uh, and also the, the second reason is I can't um, uh, lay a claim on future budgets in the absence of the finance secretary, so she'll understand that budget process. But it is our ambition to make sure that this body, both the partnership and the agency which will succeed it, will have the resources in order to take forward that transformative stage. So that's, that's our ambition, but of course we have to wait and see how it develops in future years. Andy Whiteman, followed by Willie Rainey. I thank Cabinet Secretary for advance notice of his statement. The establishment of this agency was a manifested commitment to the Scottish Greens as well, so welcome progress. Two questions. Given that social enterprise, employee ownership and cooperatives are increasingly recognised as the business models of the future to create resilience, sustainability and fairness, does he agree that such models should form a core part of the work of the new agency? And second, he said in his statement that he was committed to listening to young people uh, in the development of the legislation. Can he advise the Chamber how he intends to do this? Keith Brown. I think on the latter point raised by Andy Whiteman, that will be done through the consultation process, both in terms of the meetings and the way that the consultation invites responses to make sure that we target the specific work going on within the Scottish Government to make sure that we have representations uh, from uh, young people. Uh, in relation to his uh, other point, it's good to see that uh, the public is beginning to learn if you want to deliver things in other parties' manifestos, vote SNP and they'll do it for you. Because um, that seems to be everyone's manifesto commitment. But, uh, so we should all be agreed on this. The various models which Andy Whiteman mentioned, yes, of course, there's no reason why um, the partnership shouldn't consider those. And I would say, once again, rather than, I'm not suggesting Andy Whiteman would do this, rather than wait and see if it bubbles up, make sure and put that consultation response into the process so that that's uppermost in the minds uh, of the partnership going forward. Willie Rennie, followed by John Mason. I just want to follow up on Colin Smith's question, because I don't think he got the answer that we were really looking for. I don't think anybody in this chamber would be against discussion between ministers, the enterprise and skills body, and also the South of Scotland partnership. But the real issue is, who makes the final decision? Is it going to be in the central belt, or is it going to be in the South of Scotland? Keith Brown. Well, it may not have been the answer that Willie Rennie wanted, but I'm used to being in that position, to be honest. The answer is the answer. It will come forward from the partnership. The submissions have been made, and many representations have already been made to the partnership. But he will understand that there's a responsibility in the Scottish Government for the proper expenditure eh, of the resources of the taxpayer. And it's also the case that, as things stand, we've not had the primary legislation to establish an agency, which has obviously got that accountability. This is a partnership. So, of course, there's got to be a role for the, eh, for the Scottish Government. In due course, when it becomes an agency, then, of course, that's a different proposition, and all the decisions will be taken eh, by eh, the people in that agency. John Mason, followed by Finlay Carson. Thank you. And to kind of follow up from what Andy Whiteman was asking, can the Cabinet Secretary at all expand on how he might draw in uh, groups that don't normally take part in consultations? I mean, at this stage, it might seem a bit of a dry subject to many people, but they might not realise that in, in practice it's going to be very, very important for them. Keith Brown. I, I think that's a very good point raised uh, uh, both by Andy Whiteman and John Mason. So, uh, as I said in response to Andy Whiteman, there's a lot of work going on within the government to make sure that in terms of the location and the accessibility and the appeal of the various events, the uh, consultation events that are happening, that we get as many people as possible along to those. And a particular effort is made to get, in the case that's been mentioned already, young people to come to those. So, there's a great deal of work. I'm happy to write to both uh, Andy Whiteman and to John Mason with the work that's going on in the Scottish Government. Uh, the venues, uh, I think, are pretty much uh, where they need to be now, but in terms of how we attend to attract people, and in particular people that wouldn't normally get involved, um, I'm happy to write to both members with more details. Finlay Carson, followed by Willie Coffey. Thank you. The Cabinet Secretary, in his statement, mentions two times about a fresh approach and do things differently. I would suggest that's a recognition that over the last 11 years, his SNP government have failed the south of Scotland uh, and hopefully and I welcome the opportunity that this uh, new south of Scotland enterprise agency will bring but I do have some concerns uh, on sp the specific themes that have been set up the six key areas I'm disappointed that uh, like my colleague here uh, tourism but energy has not been included given uh, the the number of uh, renewable energy projects in the south of Scotland can the, the Cabinet Secretary explain how energy and the future potential for energy generation and storage will be met through the Enterprise Agency? 
Keith Brown. Uh, well, can I say once again that uh, I mentioned the key sectors, and of course energy is one of those, and my colleague Paul Wheel has already had a number of discussions with interests in the south of Scotland on the potential opportunities which are there. But the member uh, accuses us of failure. Well, we've established this body. I don't know how long the Conservatives are going to take to actually get around to have doing this. We are the ones that are establishing uh, this body. And of course it is the case that we want to see if that can have uh, a fresh approach. And it's the case that we want to see if it can replicate some of the successes, of course, of Highlands and Islands. If the member is generally supportive, he hides it quite well. Willie Coffey, followed by Claudia Beamish. Thank you. Cabinet Secretary will be aware of the close and common interests between the south and southwest of Scotland. You'll also be aware that Secretary of State Mr Mundell has given his full support to the Borderlands Growth Deal where his own constituency lies. Can the Cabinet Secretary tell me what progress has been made in discussion with the UK Government to support the wider economy in the south and southwest of Scotland, particularly with regard to transport infrastructure improvements? Keith Brown. We have uh, consistently pushed the UK Government to commit to 100% coverage of growth deals across Scotland and that includes uh, the Ayrshire growth deal which preceded by some way the uh, emergence of the Borderlands deal. But we have said as a Government we are committed to uh, growth deals for the whole of Scotland. That seems to us to be the only equitable way to proceed. Now I have some uh, increasing confidence that the UK Government will also support that. I'm not sure the basis on which that support will come forward, whether it will be the same as the city deals, 50-50, reserved and devolved. So I was due to have a discussion with uh, Mr Mundell uh, recently, but unfortunately had to be uh, postponed. So I expect to be discussing that with the Secretary of State shortly, and I'm more optimistic that we will see uh, a commitment from both governments to 100% of growth deals to cover some of the questions which uh, Willie, Rennie, uh, Willie Coffey rather, has just raised. Claudia Beamish, followed by Christine Graham. Thank you, Presiding Officer. As I understand it, there is no union involvement in the interim body. The Cabinet Secretary recognises that South Scotland has more people working in lower paid jobs than other parts of Scotland. The statement also focuses on the fair work opportunities in the South, uh, which the South Scotland Agency will bring. Will the Cabinet Secretary commit today to real union participation in the South Scotland part Partnership and Agency by adding them to the list of themed groups and membership? And will he also clarify whether there will be a social remit to the new agency? Keith Brown. Claudia Beamish uh, raises a fair point. We had a discussion through the uh, joint meeting with the STUC uh, and trade union partners recently on this issue. There will be substantial engagement, both through the Fair Work Convention and by a number of other means with the trade unions, not least for the reasons that she uh, mentions. I think it's very important we have that approach uh, to, to, to taking this forward. Um, it's also the case that uh, in relation to low pay and some other issues that there's a real need to have uh, that discussion. But we uh, believe that the different measures that we have already, not least through the Fair Work Convention, the regular consultation with trade unions, uh, should uh, allow us to take forward those issues. On the specific point that um, Claudia Beamish uh, raises, I'm happy to write back to the member definitively on that. Christine Graham. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. On tourism, while welcoming support for the Borders Railway and the Great Tapestry to be located in Gala Shields, a note in your speech you refer to additional resources to support new activity. Can I suggest that that should include existing activity, such as Smales Printing Works in Inner Leiden, which is having its funding cut by the National Trust, is a wee gem and the last working printing works in Scotland? Keith Brown. Indeed, the member can suggest that, and I would say that uh, she could suggest it also to the partnership, who have now uh, quite an expanding list of different proposals and different priorities being presented to them. And just to reflect some of the concerns uh, raised by members of other parties, it is right that those proposals go to that partnership. They are the ones that consider them. They are the ones that prioritise them. Uh, so it, it's a very important issue that we should look at what's there currently and not always assume we have to do uh, just something new alone. So I would suggest to the member that if she wants to get in touch with the partnership, uh, it would be well received to hear suggestions like the one that she's made. I call Rachel Hamilton. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Uh, just to bring members uh, to uh, my register, draw members to the register of interest, which I failed to do so before my question and that I am a business owner in the Scottish Borders. Thank you. That concludes questions on the ministerial statement being the update in the South of Scotland partnership. We'll move on to the next item of business and I'll give folks a few moments to shift around. <laughs>